the next supervisor of the town of Rotterdam. Thanks, Brad. Before I get started, I want to recognize a few people that are I see here. Um, Tom Buchanan's our uh, county chairperson, Republican county chairperson. Tom, wave to you. <laughs> Shout out to you. Uh, county legislator James Burmaster. Uh, and forgive me, I'm going to forget some people, but uh, Joe Serrata served in the county legislature. I think I saw Carolina Lazari, but I don't know where she... Oh, there you are. <laughs> Carolina Lazari. Tom, who did I forget? <laughs> I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. Pardon me? Yeah. Renee Mario, yeah. Supervisor of uh, Town of Dwaynesburg. <laughs> and uh, is uh, Betty Fabian here? No, I don't think so. I, 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 long story, I ran into her last night, 87-year-old who's... Uh, Husband was a 32-year veteran of the Rotterdam Police Force, and I encouraged her to try and come tonight. She'd written me a letter in mid-December over a position I'd taken against the taxing district, and I, that, there's something about a letter. You can't just throw it out. So last night I went over to her, to her house and invited her, and I thought she might be here. But. And, of course, my family, um, my uh, son Connor and uh, Lauren and Ashlyn are at the table right over there, uh, Sean and Patrick. And these two are not mine, although they're uh, my sister's kids. <laughs> uh, my oldest daughter, Kelly, is uh, teaching down in North Carolina and wants to pursue um, gainful employment. She's one of the many, about 100,000 a year, that flee New York for parts elsewhere to, to find work. And uh, she's not with us tonight, but she's with us in spirit, of course. Uh, and of course, uh, the one who would much rather be up here basking in the uh, public spotlight with cameras rolling, people taking pictures, one who loves the spotlight and the crowds, my wife Patty. <laughs> she talks a lot about relishing the spotlight and associated with being Ryerdeem's first lady. <laughs> Look, I, a little history, I won't keep you too long, I see the food's out getting cold, so I, I let, as Brad told you, I met him uh, many years ago, and uh, I was motivated by the last sentence in a book that I have dog-eared and highlighted and sticky noted, the last sentence being, we conservatives need to get busy, and uh, that motivated me as someone at the time was 52 to contact my friend Brad, whose politics I always agreed with, I said, Brad, I got to get busy, I got to do something, and at the time, I was trying to encourage him to run for public office. Um, fast forward, uh, he introduced me to two other fellows, and the four of us put together uh, a group that went door to door and uh, garnered somewhere around 900 to 1,000 signatures to develop an independent ballot line, which was very difficult to do, but we did it. Uh, I garnered about 20% of the vote in a very uh, you know, uh, competitive election. Um, and. Uh, the No New Tax Party was formed, and uh, we said we'd freeze your tax, and they answered by raising taxes. We said there'll be, we're, our position was no new taxes, and they countered with a new taxing authority, uh, which the voters this past December resoundingly rejected by about a two to one margin. Um, the challenge facing the people of the town of Rotterdam, and elsewhere as well in this recession, is well known. Challenge to uh, maintain your homes the way you'd like to maintain them, keep your homes, uh, save money in hopes of leaving some of it to your children, uh, and stay ahead of things. Um, the money we earn is expressed is the most clear expression of the liberty we enjoy. Think about it. Our time on this planet is finite, and therefore the amount of time we have to earn money is finite. So the money we get to keep is our liberty. And the more the government takes of that money, the less liberty we're able to have. So it's incumbent upon uh, government to do what we're doing at home, which is maintaining, at least just, you know, stop the bleeding financially, hold it as is, and not talk about new programs, new layers of government, and more taxes. Um, so that's part of what we're about and part of what I'm about. Um, 
James Madison in Federals 51 said that if uh, men were angels, there would be no need for government. And if the government were run by angels, there would be no need for the checks and balances, both internal and external. Of course, we know that's not the case. So government needs to exert some self-discipline. It's very difficult for government to do it because a lot of the special interests pull and tug at them for various things. And there's also politicians who are in it for the wrong reason, uh, avarice, jealousy, envy, and probably one of the worst of all, um, self-promotion or fame or whatever it is. And uh, those aren't the type of people that our founders had in mind that should be uh, seeking public service. As a matter of fact, uh, they were very interested in keeping wages low for public servants because that was their, by definition, they were public servants and not out there for their own financial gain or, or fame. Um, the pyramid of uh, structure in our country should start with the family to the community, to the towns, to the counties, on up to the state and the federal government. And I was looking at my tax bill the other day, and there's a line that says state and federal mandates. And our pyramid that our founders had in mind is upside down now. We're dealing with dictates from the federal government down to the state government, from the state government down to localities, when the strength of the government and the strength of our government should stem from the families onto the communities. Um, one of the things that I'm looking forward to, about, uh, to doing is uh, generating an independent ballot line, the No New Tax Party line again. I've also sought out the endorsements of the Republican Party, uh, thus the shout out to Tom, just kidding. No. <laughs> Here comes your, uh, what was I just talking about a minute ago about politicians that don't get into it for fame? No, the Conservative Party, the Independent Parties, I'm looking for their endorsements as well. And, um, uh, the founders were looking for citizen government, not people who were born into family politicians. Uh, they weren't looking up uh, for um, uh, necessarily experienced candidates. Think about it, they were looking for people coming off the farms, wherever they were working, going to uh, Congress, doing their two years, maybe four, and going back. And uh, that's kind of what I'm about. So, uh, my qualifications uh, Brad spoke to. I'm, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, given Rotterdam in politics, that there may be a whiff of negativity in the upcoming election. It won't come from me. Uh, as a matter of fact, some people from the opposite side of the aisle. <laughs> Many people from the opposite side of the aisle are, in fact, friends of mine and some even pickable opponents and partners. So. <laughs> but look, with your support, with the volunteers that we're going to need to do this heavy lift, to getting the word out, to your involvement in what you are doing right now, and I consider it a public service that you're out to support a candidate who you think uh, believes in what you believe in, who's after change. Um, I announce my candidacy for uh, Town Supervisor Rodney. Thank you for coming.